Hello, my name is TD Madia from Team EWN. We are looking at different manifestos. Today I'll be looking at ATM, the African Transformation Movement, my take on this. And I think before I even speak about the manifesto, I want to speak about the leader, Vuyo Luetu Zungula. I met Vuyo five years ago, the last general elections. Literally felt like a person who was wet behind the ears. He came up on the back of rumors, tons of rumors, that here's a man who's been delivered to the electorate by former President Jacob Zuma and then ANC Secretary General. I mean, a lot has happened because Zuma now with the MK party, the former Secretary General of the ANC was booted out of that party and started his own outfit, but Vuyo Zungula stands still. And interestingly enough is that I think beyond the rumors, which were never fully tested in court, what you have watched though is a person punch up of his way to literally capture our imagination for I think the right reasons actually. So I've watched Voyo and I've listened to Voyo. I've seen him fighting for the public protector and he'll say to you, it's not about her, it's about the principle. But if you listen to the line of argument that he puts forward, it actually is about what happens even to the next public protector if certain things are dealt in a particular way. So he became interesting to observe, I think, over the past five years. And I think if he makes it past the threshold when we vote and he manages to go back to parliament, they only have two seats. It'll be difficult to retain those or to even grow those, especially <laughs> with the mess that we're facing with the many political parties that all want to do. So there's tough competition, but he is an interesting character to watch nonetheless. Um, to their manifesto, I think law and order, I had a conversation with him quite recently, here's my shameless punt, on my podcast, Politicking with CD Madia, and Voyo stressed law and order a lot, actually, in that conversation. And you see that in the manifesto where they say to you, if ATM is in charge, the death penalty is a thing. So they want to bring back capital punishment, but you need to also note, as they say this, whether or not it's actually possible is another thing, right? So it was banned in 1995. It flies against the values of our constitution on so many levels, having something like the death penalty. And it's all good and well to make a promise that you'll bring back the death penalty. But you must remember how much muscle it takes to change the laws, the legislation of this country in parliament. You see how where they are passing bills before we get to the president's office. So you need to think when somebody makes a promise like this, about how feasible it actually is. The ANC is in charge and they're struggling to move. So undoing what has been done, how much would you need to win at the polls in order to do so? So my, that's my thing about these kind of promises. Like, yeah, that's a big promise. And I think there are many who are frustrated with crime who actually might want to see it come back. But there are reasons why it doesn't exist, one. Secondly, it's a mountain that we're going to try and climb. And again, it flies against the values of this country's constitution. So how do you do it? Yeah, Because politicians make promises. It's all good and well. But it does. It also needs to make sense, right? So anyway, they want that. Um, they want um, bail denied for those facing serious crimes. They want an increase in community policing. Immigration laws, as you expect, they want that tightened. And I think I understand that argument. They are worried about porous borders. They are worried about trafficking that we hear about, that we report on. So a way to tie to that and to manage and to see who's in the country and doing what is something that ATM speaks of. They speak a lot about, oh, before I forget, they also speak about commissions. I found this interesting because we've been in an era of so many commissions, but they also speak of commissions. In this case, they want an independent and anti-corruption commissions, right? Not even and multiple it sounds like. Independent and anti-corruption commissions. I don't know what their full vision is. That's something we need to maybe try and get more of a sense of is what does it do? How much power does the commission actually have? Because we are still dealing with a Zondo commission hangover, right? That should have been dealt with and addressed by politicians. Which reminds me of one more other thing about, ooh, one other thing about Vuyo that's weird for me is I know that I asked him about his time in parliament. It's been five years and his struggles, and he speaks about how political parties to a party line. So they're instructed elsewhere on what to do within parliament when they're meant to represent you and I. That seems to be a thing that shocks them. But the difficulty for me with that is he too is a party leader. There's two of them now. If he grows his party, he's also going to ask the party to act in accordance with the party line. That's becoming exactly like what he sees in the room. So there is a need to remedy how we function, but beyond his own vision and beyond what he thinks he can do. Because again, my belief is once he's in there with those kind of numbers, he too will be like exactly like the parties. He'll be like another EFFDA, ANC, because 
That's what happens when you've got numbers. You use those numbers to get your way in the house. And we, the citizens, are forgotten. That's what we're often seeing. But he speaks about that. They do speak about education a lot in the manifesto. They want a free skills-based and decolonized education. They definitely want more nurses trained. They also speak about, which I think is quite interesting because COVID has made us think a lot about that. They want disease prevention uh, strategies. That's part of their health view. Uh, they speak about, obviously, universal health as well. Um, what else it caught my, int my interest? The issue of water. People are talking about water. Some parties, not every, but parties are speaking about water. Load shedding and some of the examples we've seen of water shedding is enough cause for concern. So I think that's an interesting one that they put there. He then says, and speaks to what his observations in Parliament are, or the party says, that the country's interest must not be undermined by international organizations, right? Uh, and they also want to regulate the likes of Uber and Airbnb. They must tow at the line and obey the country's laws. I found that really interesting. Again, it speaks about influence. And the thing about politicians is that they're open to influence. I would like to see Vuelo to growing just so I can see how he navigates that. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. So that's really the core of their manifesto. They speak about an agricultural and farming revolution. A lot of the ideas, I mean, even this one, if you read this part, he speaks about tractors and how, the, you know, at least to me, he spoke about how tractors were being provided to uh, the rural villages by the then government. So it's like, hmm, a bit of a throwback to apartheid nostalgia. So I struggle a little bit with some of the views. Um, I just need maybe a little bit more meat to understand them. I'm not sure. But that is kind of the offering and a glimpse of the ATM manifesto. But again, I look at the leader and whether or not he can move the needle with any of these remains to be seen. What I can say is he's a person a lot of people wrote off at the beginning. There's now the leader and the party, I suppose. And he's kind of remained there. And he's there minus Mzonele Mangi that people thought he'd lean on leverage to move forward. Mzonele Mangi is in the EFF and I think Voyo Zungula says he doesn't believe he's missed in any way, shape or form.